many congratulations to you, Professor Gundul, for being selected in this first round of the NIF's Translation Fellowships. To start with, we'd love to get a sense from you about the book itself. Okay, uh, thank you, Yovanika. Um, I'm happy to have received this honor from uh, the NIF. Um, <clears throat> this is basically a uh, Allama Prabhu Mattu Shaiva Pratibe uh, by D.R. Nagaraj is a uh, book that deals with uh, medieval Indian intellectual tradition. You know, Allama is a 12th century sh Sharana mystic. Uh, basically, uh, the Veera Shaiva movement of uh, the 12th century is perceived as a social movement, as an anti-caste movement. But the most important thing uh, about this movement is that it is through and through an intellectual movement. Um, so DR Nagaraj shows the intellectual dimension of the 12th century Veera Shaiva movement by reconstructing the life and thought of Allama Prabhu. So Allama Prabhu engaged with pan-Indian intellectual debates. He had a dialogue with his contemporaries like Basavanna and Akka Mahadevi. And also he had a, a kind of debate with the thought of Abhinava Gupta and uh, other uh, mystics and philosophers of the time. It is important for us to make sense of our own intellectual past, to understand who we are and how we have come to this level it is important for us to engage with philosopher poets like Allama Prabhu. Thank you very much for that. Our second question is uh, whether you could tell us a little bit more about D.R. Nagaraj, uh, who is a towering figure in, in Kannada literature and philosophy. Yeah, uh, D.R. is an important critical voice. You know, we Kannadigas are proud of DR's mind, you know, having produced such a great intellectual of uh, the 20th century um, Canada world. And uh, to the outside uh, Canada world, he is known, mainly known for his reflections on uh, the Gandhi Ambedkar encounter, especially his book is very popular, that is Flaming Feet and other essays, which deals with uh, the Dalit movement in India. And uh, uh, another book, Listening to Lou, um, deals with uh, literature, culture, and politics, and other themes. These two books are known to uh, non Canada readers because they are in English, and it is uh, very well edited by Professor Prithvidatta Chandra Shobhi. Okay, and uh, DR, uh, in, in Canada context, you know, uh, the Canada critical tradition um, in, in a way uh, began with uh, Professor Kirtinath Kurtukoti. He laid a solid foundation to Canada critical tradition. And it was DR who took, along with other critics, who took this critical tradition to the height and particularly this book, you know, uh, this is the last book which was published uh, posthumously. Um, it, 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 is, it belongs to the mature period of uh, uh, DR's intellectual career. And as a Kannadiga, I feel if we have to renew our critical tradition, it is important for us to engage with critics like Kirtanath Kurtukoti and DR. There's an important point you made there about the fact that this was the very last book 
uh, this was the last book that Dear Nagraj wrote. And I believe that he was planning to translate it to English on his own. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's true. When uh, I approached uh, Mrs. Nagraj, you know, Girija Nagraj um, for copyright uh, of this book, for, for translating this book, uh, she told me that uh, he planned to write it in English and later he wrote it in Kannada. And also uh, his friend, uh, uh, Professor Manu Chakravarti, you know, told me that both of them together wanted to translate it into English. You know, uh, but unfortunately, you know, he couldn't see uh, the book and uh, he passed away. And uh, it's my fortune that I am I'm translating it, though it is a very challenging and difficult task. So, you know, leading from that, I think you've already mentioned that this is a difficult translation and also that perhaps uh, DR had conceptualized it in English in certain ways and then written it in Kannada and now you bring it back into English. So could you tell us, uh, we already know about the significance of the translation, but could you tell us about the process of translation as it has started, if there's anything you might want to share with us? Yeah, um, uh, you know, while applying for this uh, fellowship, I had... Uh, you made a list of the books I wanted to translate. I tried this thing, that thing. Then I also consulted some of my friends and colleagues. And in fact, uh, finally, I made a list of three books. And I used to go to uh, this DR's book, Alama Prabhu and Shaiva Pratibhe. And I, I was really afraid of, you know, uh, the, the density and the complexity of the book. And I thought, no, this wouldn't work for translation. But I, I finally, I, I, I thought that I, I should try. And then I started translating the first chapter, uh, you know, where he undertakes a critical survey of Indian philosophy, how Indian philosophers uh, have uh, mm, misunderstood the local traditions like uh, 12th century Veera Shaiva movement. That was quite exciting and also, the, the part of the difficulty uh, of uh, translating this book is about DR could not edit it. DR wrote it and it is published as it is. So there are some stylistic problems. There are uh, repetitions. And uh, at times certain ideas need explanation which are not there. So for me, it was difficult because I am basically a student of modernity, you know, but this is about pre-modern uh, literary culture. It's a pre-modern philosophical system. So as you rightly mentioned in the fellowship that it is not simply a fellowship for uh, translation, it is also a fellowship for research. So I was to do a little bit of research into uh, understanding the nuances and meanings of medieval Indian philosophy. So it, it, for me, it was not simply translation, but also the task of exploring a new area of inquiry and understanding. And I took the help of uh, many of my friends and colleagues whenever I couldn't understand, especially certain concepts. I think that's a great answer. And uh, personally, I'm really looking forward to the book. I think this sort of philosophical inquiry, and uh, it's, it's a really imaginative work. So I think it will really benefit people to have it back in English in, in uh, sort of the way he might have perhaps intended it to be. In the end, I'd like to request you for a, a comment in Canada. Actually, rather than a comment, there's a particular vachana, I believe, which the book starts with. Uh, perhaps you could tell us about that. Okay. Elrigo, Namaskara. New India Foundation and a translation fellowship for Canada, the Krutige Sikta Erodo, Namelergo, Santosha, the Vishaya, Matu, Idu, Nano, apply Madidu. Uh, DR Nagarajara, Allama Prabhu Matu, Shaiva Pratibe, uh, Nana Prakara, Idi Kanada, Kave Parampareli, Muru Kavigodu, 
ನಮಗೆ ಬಹಳ ವಿಶಿಷ್ಟವಾಗಿ ಕಾಣ್ತಾರು ಒಂದು ಅಲ್ಲಮ ಎರಡನೇದ್ದು ಶಿಶ್ನಾಳ ಶರೀಫ ಮೂರನೇದ್ದು ದರ ಬೇಂದ್ರೆ ಇವರು ಇವರು ಮೂರು ಜನ ದೇಶಿ ಮತ್ತು ಮಾರ್ಗ ಈ ಎರಡೂ ಪರಂಪರೆಗಳ ಆಚೆ ಆ ಕನ್ನಡವನ್ನ ಕನ್ನಡದ ಆ ಬೌದ್ಧಿ ಬೌದ್ಧಿಕತೆಯನ್ನ ಕನ್ನಡದ ಕಾವ್ಯವನ್ನ ಕಟ್ಟಿಕೊಟ್ಟವರು ಆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಅಲ್ಲಮ್ಮನ ಅಲ್ಲಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಭು ಪುಸ್ತಕದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಪ್ರಭುವಿನ ಜೀವನದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇರುವ ಈ ಈ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷಿಗೆ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಕೇವಲ ನನ್ನ ಯಶಸ್ಸು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಕನ್ನಡಿಗರ ಯಶಸ್ಸು ಮತ್ತು ಈ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ನನಗೆ ಸಿಗುವಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ನನಗೆ ಸಹಾಯ ಮಾಡಿದ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸ್ನೇಹಿತರನ್ನ ಗುರುಗಳನ್ನ ನಾನು ನೆನೆಸ್ಕೊಳ್ತೇನೆ ಮತ್ತು ಈ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ನಾನು ಅಲ್ಲಮ್ಮನ ಒಂದು ವಚನವನ್ನ ಓದ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೇನೆ ಕಾಲುಗಳೆರಡು ಗಾಲಿ ಕಂಡಯ್ಯ ದೇಹವೆಂಬುದು ತುಂಬಿದ ಬಂಡಿ ಕಂಡಯ್ಯ ಬಂಡಿಯ ಹೊಡೆವರು ಐವರು ಮಾನಿಸರು ಒಬ್ಬರಿಗೊಬ್ಬರು ಸಮವಿಲ್ಲಯ್ಯ ಅದರಿಚ್ಚಯ ಅರಿದು ಹೊಡೆಯ ದಿರ್ದಡೆ ಅದರಚ್ಚು ಮುರದಿತ್ತು ಗುಹೇಶ್ವರ now uh, i would like to read uh, the translation of uh, this vachana it is i am taking it from uh, ak ramanujan's uh, speaking of uh, shiva look here the legs are two wheels the body is a wagon full of things five men drive the wagon and one man is not like another unless you ride it in full knowledge of its ways the axle will break o lord of caves 